New figures published in the UK say more than 200,000 people were lost to the workforce in the first half of the year as a result of long COVID. It's thought this could partially explain why Britain's labour force has shrunk so much since the pandemic began. It comes after a US report estimated the lingering effects of the virus could ultimately bring an economic cost of more than $3.7 trillion over the long term. Karsten Bozeski is the global head of macro at ING Bank. I asked him about the impact of long COVID on the global economy. I think in, in all honesty, there, we, there, is still, there is still more that we don't know about long COVID than what, that is what we do know. Um, so, but when you look at labor markets, uh, when you look at now the aftermath of the kind of you know, first two years of COVID, we do see that there are people still um, suffering under under this long COVID, and it has clear implications for the way they can work or they cannot work. It has an important implication for the labor market, particularly in times in which um, the labor market is already under enormous tension as we're having a lack of qualified workers all over the Western world. Clearly, governments have had to spend a lot more on medical costs. But are there other longer term concerns or will many of these issues simply resolve themselves? Well, there are definitely longer term uh, concerns. It's not only long COVID, but to also think about the uh, psychological um, effect that uh, the lockdowns have had on people. Um, so social isolation, loneliness, that is also something that, uh, that will have actually economic costs uh, to, uh, to countries, to societies. And, and it's simply too early to tell how high these costs really are, but obviously the longer term implications. So not only by COVID itself, but also they call them second round effects, lockdowns, social isolation, um, be, being, being on a distance um, is, is really having an enormous impact on societies and will also take, I think it will, will take years for societies to readjust and We'll also have people actually who will suffer in, for, for longer, a longer period from these implications. And as you said in your previous answer, there's still more we don't know about long COVID than we do know. And at present, there's still no medical consensus on what the nature of the condition is um, or how best to treat it. Uh, could new innovations like flexible hybrid remote working actually help to mitigate this uncertainty? I think all, all innovations um, that uh, somehow make human contact less likely, mm -hmm. yeah, even though it also can have repercussions in, in the form of loneliness, um, but, um, but, but, but to avoid really overly crowded places in times of uh, a virus bursts out, um, in, in, in terms of an, another kind of yes, sickness getting, getting into a region or a country would clearly help. Um, so social distancing definitely helps. But as we learned also from the yeah, from psychologists, it is that uh, social distancing also at the cost. And I think that is the whole, that is the big challenge for people in charge, for politicians, for governments to, to balance um, the risks and the benefits from social distancing, from lockdowns for society and the entire economy.